Hello everybody and welcome. If it's your first time with us today, happy to have you here and if you've been here before, welcome back of course. We're kicking off a brand new series today in the Everything Endgame section. So we're going to try to bring you guys everything you need to know about the Endgame, teach you through all the different steps. This is going to be a nice long series and we're going to start things off as basic as we can with King and Pawn endings. Now, one of the big principles that we got to take away when we're talking about king and pond endings is the idea of the opposition. So we're going to look today at what the opposition is, how we can use our kings to gain the opposition, and also what the distant opposition is as well. If you take a look at our board here right now, we'll notice we have no pawns on it, just two kings. Of course, in an actual game, this would be a draw, but we're going to imagine a quick game here where the whole purpose is to get your king to the other side of the board. We have white against black, and if we can manage to get our king to the other side, then we win. If black gets their king to the other side, then they will win. And let's talk about why that's possible or if it is or not. So let's imagine that both sides just run right toward each other, toward the center of the board here. We're running right on up, and bam. Well, you see these kings are going to face off against each other, and white has just played the move, king to e4, and his king is now covering all three of these squares, so of course the black king cannot move forward. They're facing off against each other. Neither king can move forward without being captured by the other, and of course that is not legal in our chess game. This is a situation in which we call the opposition. The opposition is when the kings are facing off against each other and they're preventing one another from getting to the squares that they want to go to. Now, in this scenario, who has the opposition? Does white have it or does black have it? Well, that has to do with whose move it is. So white just played the move e4, meaning that now it's black to move. In this case, because white just played e4, white has taken the opposition. And that is 99% of the time the scenario you're going to want to have. The reason being is that now black has to move. And suddenly, if black moves to the side, well, now the white king can run this way. Remember, if we get to the other side of the board, we win. And black is not going to be able to come over and cut this king off in time. White gets over there and wins the game. Same thing happens if black goes to the other side. White will run the other way. So in this situation, white has the opposition, is going to be able to get past the black king and win the game. Now, why would that be important in an actual chess game? Well, if you can imagine a couple pawns here, let's say a black pawn on c5 and a white pawn on c4, you could see how this could be very bad for black. If black has to move to the side, white can come over, and now suddenly black is not going to be able to stop the white king from taking the pawn and being able to go on to win the game. We'll look a lot more at these techniques in other videos, but this is simply to show you the importance importance of the opposition starting off here. Now, not only is there opposition if we're directly in front of one another, but there are other forms of it as well. We have what we call a diagonal opposition. So if the kings are one square apart diagonally like this, this still is an opposition scenario. So when might this potentially arise that we would have to worry about? Well, let's imagine that right now white has just played the move f5. So he plays king g4 to f5, and these kings are one square diagonally from each other. If it's black to move, black could play king to e7, and now after king to e5, you see that normal opposition. So basically, all of these diagonal oppositions are extrapolations of this initial position. What do we mean by that? Well, we mean they are forms of the opposition which can always lead to this final scenario. How do you know whether or not you're going to be able to achieve that? Well, there's a simple rule that you can use to follow, and it has to do with looking at the colors that are in the corners of rectangles. What do I mean there? Well, let's go ahead and put our kings back on their starting positions, and let's imagine that black has a king over here on d7. How can white take what we call the distant opposition? 
Okay, so we're going to draw a rectangle from the black king's position to our king's position and look at the colors of all of the corner squares. Right now, black's king is on a light square. If all four colors of the rectangle are the same after we make our move, then we have the opposition. So, if we play the move king to e2, you'll notice that the white and black king are both on light colors, but the rectangle has two dark colored squares as well. This is not the opposition for white. If we play the move king to d1, now it's only a line, it's not a rectangle. But yes, this is the distant opposition. It's only light squares with both points. So that is one form of opposition. There's one other move which also will take the distant opposition for the white pieces. What move is that? It's going to be the move king to f1. And now look at this rectangle over here. And you'll notice that the black king is on a light square. This corner is a light square. D1 is a light square, and the king on F1 is a light square. If all four corners are on light squares, then you have the opposition in this scenario. That's one way of extrapolating out. How can we know that for sure? Well, let's play through some moves and see as they get closer together. So let's say that black plays his king to D6. How can we keep the opposition? Well, that's a dark square, so we're going to draw a rectangle and it looks like we can come to F2. Four corners there, all on the same color. That's the opposition. Let's say black plays king to D5. How can we keep the opposition? Diagonal opposition now, one square apart, all on light squares. King comes to D4, and now king F4, and we have that normal opposition. The kings are facing off in the center of the board. So this is one way of figuring out whether or not you can gain the opposition in order to get your king in the more advantageous position. We'll look at a lot more scenarios. We'll look at infiltration and what to do with pawns on the board in our videos to come. See how we can actually use this idea in order to break through, either win our games or hold draws when we need to. But hopefully this gives you a good, firm grasp on what the opposition is. Look for the corners of those rectangles to know whether or not you have the opposition, and that's how you can keep charge of your king position. Make sure to to use your king most effectively in all of your end games. Make sure to leave any questions or comments you have in the section below and look forward to seeing what you guys do in your games to come. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to like, post any comments, and share via the buttons below. Check out our website at chesswithnick.com for further video, more content, and any postings on lessons, further video analysis, or written analysis that you may be interested in. And be sure to check out our YouTube channel, Chess with Nick on YouTube.com. Have a great day, and wishing you best of luck.